Hello everyone, I'm here with our eldership team from Life Church, uh, Sai, John, Dave, and uh, we're uh, involved in a kind of a bit of a listening exercise uh, where we're really trying to hear from God together for the life of the church and for the future of the church. And you might remember a few weeks ago we sent out a questionnaire when we were asking people in the church some of the things that they've been feeling and experiencing during this time some of the challenges some of the hopes and dreams and aspirations as well and so uh, uh, we also invited people to uh, ask us any questions if they got questions they wanted to ask us for us to think through and discuss then uh, we would do that and so tonight is us really just addressing some of those questions now there are a lot of questions uh, and uh, so what we did was many of them were on kind of similar themes. So we've narrowed it down really to kind of four areas to chat through and discuss. And uh, each one of us as elders will be kind of hosting uh, a question, if you like, or an area of discussion. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I shall pass on to uh, the wonderful Mr. John Lawn, And he's going to just tell us what the first kind of questions and comments were about. John, let me hand over to you. Thank you, Chris. Well, one of the first things we, we noticed was that so many people actually, even before you ask questions, just said thank you so much to us as elders for leading in this time. And we felt so encouraged just by your support for us and prayer and just general kind of looking out for us. And this was, this was followed up by people asking kind of how are we doing? How are we getting on? How is lockdown affecting us? How are we finding life? So for us, well, it's... Obviously, we're working from home. There's different work environments. We're missing meeting with people. We're missing being with people. We all love you guys and, and look forward to the day we can see you face to face again and chat with you that way. Life is different for us. We've got, as with many other people around the church, around the country, we've got family and children here with us who are working through this. Some of us are homeschooling and uh, enjoying or not enjoying the challenges that go <laughs> with that. If we're if we're honest, we have ups and downs. There's there's parts of this that are, are hard and parts of this that that are good and we enjoy. Um, I'm going to pass around to the other guys just to share a quick snippet, maybe one thing that they're they're thankful for. Um, so yeah, pass on to you. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, we're going to Dave. Go on, Dave. Um, we're, um, we're doing all right in the McNee household. Thank you for, um, for caring about us. Um, but, uh, one thing that's been really encouraging uh, has been the, just the, the way in which we've grown our relationships with the people who live us along the streets and conversations over the garden fence and things like that and chatting after the clap on Thursday night. So we're really thankful for the way um, that this has just opened up opportunities to talk to our neighbours a bit more and get to know the people who live around us. Yeah, we had an awesome street party for the VE Day thing. Was, everyone was out. It was amazing. I had my full extrovert fix um, that I've been craving for so long. Um, I think that's one of the, been, been one of the, the tough things, I think, personally, um, and probably for Joe, my wife as well, um, has been how, how I've sort of found that. And I've, I've sort of spoken into that a couple of times preaching. Um, but what's been really amazing is off the back of those things, people who've been in touch with me to just check in how I'm doing. Um, so there's, there's a couple of people who phone me regularly just to sort of say, you all right? How you doing? Um, which is great. You know, just the, the level of care that the church is showing, not, not just to, to me, not just to us, but to each other is, is amazing. Yeah. I mean, we've, uh, we're doing really well. We've got three generations on lockdown here in Thornbury Avenue uh, and hopefully a new baby on the way very soon. Um, we're recording this on uh, Monday and uh, Lydia, my daughter in law, was due on Sunday. So uh, that could happen anytime soon and then the, the house will be filled with a pitter patter of tiny feet. This, no could, doubt be a, this could be a short lived Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, granddad will be up in the night changing nappies and things, which will be fun. Um, but no, I've just been really, I, I guess I've just been really encouraged by people's care for us as a family uh, as we've been in lockdown. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I should also just say that, um, don't worry, I wasn't attacked. This is just the at-home lockdown haircut I had to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got the same excuse, actually. <laughs> so and I have different hairdressers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just uh, one of the whole areas that people asked us questions on and wanted to discuss was uh, 
kind of the eschatological implications of what we're involved in here is is this the end of the world should we all be walking around with banners saying the end of the world is nigh uh, are these signs of the labor pains uh, before the new heavens and the new earth come and uh, so it would be good day perhaps you could uh, give us a bit of thinking on that and let people know what you think the implications of what we're involved in are how we can think about this biblically yeah, sure. It's not at all an unreasonable question to be asking. There's some really vivid language in the Bible in books like Daniel and in Revelation about uh, descriptions of plagues and natural disasters. And so I think in times like this, there's an element of which it's natural to wonder whether are the things we're experiencing uh, evidences of those things that the Bible was talking about, about the kind of times that we live in and the end of the world. Um, and actually, this kind of makes its way into popular press occasion as well. So there was, um, there was an article in the Express about it earlier this week. There was something in the New York Times about it uh, the week before that. Um, just to say a couple of really broad spectrum things, um, two kind of periods of time that the New Testament talks about in particular, that it's helpful to understand is the kind of the idea of the present age and the age to come. And that present age is sometimes called the present evil age. Um, the coronavirus doesn't give us an indication about the timings of those. It doesn't tell us when the present age will be ending and when the age to come will be beginning. That's that's not a surprise. Jesus himself said in Matthew 24 that nobody knows the timing of these things. And so we shouldn't kind of be overly preoccupied with trying to work things out exactly. If Jesus said nobody knows, then Jesus is right when he says nobody knows. But we should, I think, be stirred into these things. The current situation certainly should make us aware of the brokenness and the pain that exists in the world in which we live, the, the lack of synergy, particularly between human beings and the world in which we live and i think that then kind of strikes onto the idea of imminence and like how close to jesus coming back are we um i think probably that the helpful thing to think about there is what jesus says in luke 12 that we are always supposed to be ready for jesus to come back that readiness is a, a state of being we should always be in we should always be living in anticipation of that day when Jesus comes back, because for everybody who's a follower of Jesus, that's going to be a really good day. And so we should be holding on to that hope constantly. But equally, because we know that day is coming, we should have a passion for people to believe and trust in Jesus before that day comes. And so if you find yourself thinking more about the day when Jesus comes back because of the circumstances that we're currently living in, I think that's a good thing as long as we apply it right. If we apply it right to saying, actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to that day and I'm more passionate about people hearing about Jesus right now because that day is coming, then that's exactly what an awareness of the end of the world should do for any Christian, I think. Yeah, that's really helpful, Dave. Thank you. I mean, I think for me, it's, uh, I, I kind of flip between, wow, this is, this is of some magnitude that's going on around us and then as you're saying and then I kind of anticipate a bit of heaven and think wow what if Jesus did come back wouldn't it be awesome you know mm. so I think the important thing is we're not fear we're not fearful you know for us to live as Christ to die as gain our security isn't in this mortal frame anyway it never has been but but uh, getting that balance right is really helpful Dave um do either of you other guys want to chip in any thought or comment to that those questions about the end I think, it's, I think it's really helpful, but I think um, one of the things that it, I think one of the things that the people in our church asking that question has done has made me kind of think, actually, how many more people then are asking this question? Like, even if you don't have an awareness of the stuff in Revelation or in Daniel, it's a question that lots of people in society are asking, and therefore lots of our friends will be asking it as well, which is where stuff like the Alpha Course comes in, it's where stuff like Sunday Mornings comes in, where we're going to be presenting people with the hope of the gospel, which, which is the whole point. Um, you know, so those are the those are the kind of the ways in which I guess we can show our readiness um, is is by thinking, OK, well, if I'm thinking like that, then then other people are thinking like that, too. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks. Anything from you, John? Are you happy for us to move on to the next bit? I am. You've done a great job, guys. Oh, fantastic. OK, <laughs> well, the next group of questions 
uh, was an interesting group of questions because they were all asking questions about what we're currently doing and how much of that we will take into our future. So our prayer meetings have moved online. Some of our devotional content is online. Obviously, our Sunday meetings are online. We're using Zoom. We're using social media. We're using church online, all these various different things that we're using. And some people were asking, is that going to continue on even when we're allowed back into society again. And uh, so, Sai, you've been really massively involved and your gifts have come to the fore, you and Sash and others, in putting together a lot of our, uh, our Sunday content and things like that. So perhaps you could give us a few thoughts on what we've learned, where we're going, what, what your thoughts yeah. are on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, been a, it's definitely been an interesting time, hasn't it? I think, um, I think one of the things that I have sort of become, but I guess come to realize is that some, some people have, have absolutely loved all the new stuff that is happening um, kind of in the church calendar. And then other people look at the church calendar and think, what on earth are you doing? This is, you know, this is a God given time of rest and I don't want to do any of those things. Um, and I guess the beauty of that is that there is then therefore something for everyone um, because no one has to do any of it um, just as it is in, in normal church life. And, and, you know, we are a church that, that we want to be there for everyone. Um, and so because of that, I guess, you know, we are, we're hundred percent convinced that, that meeting together, um, is how authentic church should look. And in a time when we, when we can't do that, this is, I guess, whilst not the best, it's, it's the next best thing. Um, but you know, we're looking, we're looking to that day when we can, we can sing together again, you know, however, however well, however badly we can take communion together. We can have a coffee together again, however good, however bad, depending on which site you go to. Um, we can have meals together. You know, we can do all of those things, all those, all those one anothering things that the Bible talks about. But, um, but the reality is that like, this isn't, this isn't the time to be making major decisions about how the future of the church looks um but it is also partly why we're asking the questions that we asked in the in the email just in that kind of this moment in time what is god saying what is god doing because all of those things help us to i guess just to kind of look forward and to think okay god what are you doing how does this stuff look um so chris was mentioning before we even started recording this evening just about how the the printing press changed the face of of the known kind of world in a sense in during the reformation and how who knows who whether zoom could be the same or social media or whatever it is actually none of these things are beyond god's reach um and so we're going to be i guess just considering how how this time has helped us to engage people to gather people um and i suppose some of the stuff that we've been doing is actually stuff that we were already considering pre lockdown pre covid um so you'll know that we've been recording our meetings um by vip on video so they were going out on youtube before all of this started um so you can look back at some of the ones where we had no idea what we were doing um if you wanted to um but it's given us the option i guess to think about how we move forward with it in the future um so we we will meet again in person that's the that's the good news um but the reality is actually the online option um, is bearing gospel fruit it's never been uh it's never been an easier invite i guess um and what's been a huge joy for me is seeing how many people um have been taking the opportunity to to go for it to invite to invite your friends to invite your family along to stuff we've had we've had guests at church every single week now that happens actually most of the time in, in kind of real life as well um but it's been noticeable um i guess just maybe we can see it more in each other which encourages us all more to to do more of it um but like i say we'll, we'll see where the where the fruit is that's kind of the, the biblical way of looking at things isn't it you know you, you see where the fruit is and you and you plow into those kind of areas not to mix farming metaphors too much um but like i say we're looking forward to that day when we're when we're together um physically again um and I think, like I say, we're just, we're excited for what God's doing during this time. Um, not necessarily excited about the, about the reason or the effects of this time, but, but nothing is beyond his reach and, and his promise to us all is that he will turn all things together for the good of those who love him. And he is, he is going to make his name famous. Um, and so we're looking forward to that kind of, I guess, what this change is, which I guess links a little bit, Chris, to the, to the bit you were going to take us through. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Thanks. So, I mean, do any of you other guys just want to chip anything in at all on that? You know, what what, what bits have you enjoyed? Why don't you say that? Which bits have you enjoyed or found difficult with the kind of online 
engagement. John, why don't you answer that one? Ireland says I look at Dave if he looks at me. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed, even though they are particularly chaotic, the Zooms after church, just having that time to have face-to-face -face time with, with people. Um, and also seeing the, the kind of kids interact with the adults as well. We, we often have our kids in there with putting Lego things across the screen and stuff and showing things they've been doing. And it, it's, been a, it's been a nice time to kind of interact across the, the, um, the age range and the breadth of the church. Yeah, that's good. I'd, I'd just like to say as well that the, um, the team here in the office and, and um, the volunteers have, have done tremendously well to adapt very quickly in, in this time and to move us online and to be able to put such good, good quality stuff out. And it's, it's a huge credit to, to those we have in Life Church. This has been reasonably smoothly done and, and we've got most people involved. So well done, guys. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, I, think, I, I think I've, I've appreciated it. And let's just be honest, I've appreciated some of the convenience of it. And so, you know, sometimes it, it it has been nicer not to have to get up really early on a Sunday morning or having to spend lots of time packing stuff down or things like that. At the same time, it's, I found it really hard as an extrovert, missing people, missing all of those social interactions and um, missing, feel like it's a kind of, a, feel like it's a kind of grayscale copy of the full color version of hearing God's word, of worshiping together and all of those things on a Sunday. So at the same time as saying, I've enjoyed the convenience at times, I'm now in a position where I would say, do you know what? The cost of having to set my alarm again on a Sunday morning to go and help set up with church or to be there for longer or to wrestle the kids out of the house on time is a cost I am so much more happy to pay now having lived with the convenient alternative for a little while, I can't wait until we're able to meet back again together properly. Yeah, it's a bit like moving into a new house and you have takeaways for the first little while. Or, you know, like you get your kitchen sorted out and you can't cook and it's like you get takeaways and it's great for the first few days. And then you think, oh, I really need some proper food. <laughs> you know, you want to get back to the real thing, don't you? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I think we all feel that lack, don't we? We feel that absence. Um, okay, I just want to um, just share a few thoughts based on some of the other questions that um, were raised, really to do with what do we feel God's saying about the church, the future? Are there any things that are new, different? Um, what are the priorities that God is speaking to us about? And before I actually just share that, I just wanted to mention a couple of things that people have probably got questions about as well and, are asking, and have asked me personally about. Uh, one was about our plans for a fourth site. And uh, now we're still pressing on with the mission that God has got in front of us. Obviously, timings for everything uh, are completely out the window at the moment. So we don't know what that's going to look like, but it's still our desire to, to pursue that. So keep that in mind. Same with the building. We're still, with, you know, we're praying that God will open up a significant building for us to use in the city um, after this is all over that we can use for his glory. So we're still pressing on with all of those things. Another one that was perhaps a little more imminent was um, bringing James Hatcher into eldership. You remember we had that plan for the 7th of June. Guy Miller was due to be with us to preach at Life Church, and we were going to lay hands on James and appoint him as an elder alongside this team. Um, now, uh, as we've chatted it through and discussed it, um, we've come to the conclusion that there's no way biblically we can appoint James as an elder because it involves the laying on of hands and we just Boris says no uh, and so so it's, it's a bit like if we try to do a baptism on zoom it, there are some things that we just can't do um, and and the, it, it, it just wouldn't ring in harmony with the gospel we can pray together on zoom but we can't baptize somebody on zoom and I don't think we can lay hands on an elder and release them into eldership uh, and I think it would somehow miss the importance of the moment and the event and what it means for James and Esther and for us as a team and as a church. So we're going to wait to appoint James into, uh, into eldership until we are together again. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that James isn't going to be fully involved with the life of the church. Uh, he'll still be um, continuing his current role 
and will be working alongside us as elders and he'll be probably involved from from now ish in the majority of our elders meetings and our decision making and our thinking and uh, so we want you to know and we want you to receive his leadership still in the same way that you would do um, and you have been um, which we're amazingly thankful for and we want you to continue to pray for him and Esther this is obviously a time of challenge for them the family as well but as soon as possible we're wanting to appoint James as an elder so we'll we'll do that good news is guy miller will still be with us in june um but it'll be uh kind of on your computer screen or your television or your phone rather than in person uh, so he'll be coming towards the end of our series on apostleship so that's something to look forward to but as far as the big things that we feel god has been saying and that, that i feel stirred about ironically we're in a time of isolation and the thing that god keeps speaking mostly about is connection and I've been so amazed at the, the, the three different types of connection that we've, we've strengthened during this time. And that I think as God's people in this city, we need to continue to strengthen. Uh, the first connection is, is, is a connection upward. I don't know about you, but I think when we're thrust into a context like this, I think our dependence on God and our awareness of our humanity grows. And I found myself um, praying more, uh, connecting more with him in a kind of devotional way, just expressing my frustration sometimes and my desire at others. And I don't know, just that sense of me being loved by him and needing him, I guess. I've really needed God. And so that kind of upward connection is something that I think many people across the church are finding that they're, they're really needing. If you're uh, isolated and alone, to know that you've got the companionship of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit with you, is vital is vital and if you're locked in with a, a big family similarly you need the patience and the fruit of the spirit to be able to you know to continue to press on and so i just think god has been developing our our intimacy with him and our connection with him and corporately i think we've been praying more and deeper and better and more regularly and and my desire would be to take that through into the, the new day that we become a people who are much more known for their prayer and their dependence on God, perhaps our humility as well, acknowledging that we depend on him and all of those kind of things. So I'm wanting us to exercise that, that privilege of prayer, I guess, a little more earnestly. So that's our upward connection. I think the other thing that I feel we've grown in, and this has come up this evening already, is our inward connection with one another. I've been so impressed with the maturity of the church and its leaders and the way they've cared for one another, loved one another, served one another. Uh, every day I have phone calls, emails, messages, just expressing care and concern for other members of the church. And, um, and I think through things like our life support network, people have genuinely found care for one another and been praying for one another. And I, I think I see something of the authentic New Testament church in all of that. And so I've been thrilled by that. And that's something that I'd really love to carry on into uh, whatever post lockdown looks like is our, our our genuineness our authenticity i don't know what you want to call it but our the the reality of our love for one another our service for one another our compassion for one another our prayer for one another i mean just seeing people pray for each other giving gifts to one another being concerned about one another's welfare um you know those kind of things so so that kind of inward connection i'd love i'd love the church to continue to grow in one another in um, and then the other connection was our connection outwards. And uh, I, I guess that's twofold. Firstly, our, our kind of immediate context of Southampton and the streets we live in. I mean, Dave, you mentioned this side, John, you've all mentioned this, that we found a greater degree of connection with our immediate neighbours in our streets, uh, our friends on our Facebook um, and other social media and things like that. Um, and we found this ease of connection uh, i mean every day on our, our street whatsapp group there's jokes there's banter there's photographs there's you know needs and concerns uh, i mean my joe's been sharing the um the blessing video on our street whatsapp and they're, they're all saying thank you that was that's so uplifting you know and, and i just can't, i can't imagine us doing that kind of thing before we wouldn't have had the arena to do it and so I think this has been happening right away across the church and the churches. And so I'm, I'm kind of eager for us to 
harness that desire, the thing that's motivating us to do that. Because, you know, it's no more difficult for us to actually physically speak to people. We just make it so sometimes. And so I think that outward connection, connecting with people around us, I'd love to see that grow in the future. And I think just taking things a little broader and a little bigger. I, I, I think I can say with certainty in our lifetimes, there has never been a genuinely global situation. Um, I mean, you could hark back to the, I don't know, the financial crisis of 2008 and say, well, that affected the whole world. Well, it did, but only really in, in the economy and it didn't overflow into many nations that are, are you know, and, and other things are, are kind of geographically limited. You, you know, there are earthquakes and, and floods and things like that. I remember the earthquake in 2015 in Nepal, and that has a huge devastation for one nation, but very little effect in others. But we're in a context that where there is a truly global shaking going on. And if there's a global shaking, it requires a global solution. Uh, and we, the church, are the ones that have the global solution. We have Jesus and his gospel of the kingdom. Uh, and so my hope is that out of this, it's a wake-up call for the nations of the world to come back to a place of humility, acknowledging that we're, we're creatures and he's the creator, not thinking we've got everything sorted and sold. And I think many nations have been quite humbled by this. And that means the individuals in those nations are humbled too. And um, my prayer is that out of this church planting, gospel advance, apostolic mission to the ends of the earth, call it what you will, but a global solution for a global pandemic. And we're the ones that have got it. So for me, the thing that excites me most is the potential for what Jesus could do in these next few years through his church around the world. And so I think they're the themes that I'm kind of resonating with really a connection upwards our, our own personal and corporate connection through prayer dependence on jesus our connections inwards to the church one another in loads and loads more and our connection outwards to our neighbors and also to the nations so they're the kind of things that i'm really feeling like we need to take into and use to help shape the new normal and hopefully there'll be things that you will resonate with as well um i mean before we wrap up we're going to wrap up now but um has anybody got any final comments um si, uh, anything you want to add i mean the only other question that came in was uh that was didn't fit into those categories was who would win in an arm wrestle in competition um and i can <laughs> safely say I'd, I'd probably be last um but I, th I think it'd be quite a, quite a battle between Chris and Dave. Shall we have a, a, a oh, sorry, we, John? We have socially distanced arm wrestling. I'll challenge you for last. <laughs> <laughs> That's our first that, over our first pint when we're out of lockdown. We shall find the answer to that question, Si. <laughs> we'll post, we'll post the results. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, Dave. Anything you wanted to add to finish off with? Um, just to say, we're really thankful for for so many of you who've contributed in so many ways. You've heard a few people get name dropped in the last few minutes about the things they've done, but really it would take us way too long to list everything that so many people have done to make our jobs as uh, leaders and elders much, much easier than they might have been. Um, and so we're just really thankful for, for so many of you and please keep going. And I guess as well, the other thing I'd say is like for people who are finding this particularly hard um, and particularly difficult for whatever reasons, for financial reasons, for social reasons, for, yeah, the list could go on, couldn't they? Um, hold on, keep going and please let the church help. Um, if you want to get in touch with us and there's anything we can do to help, please don't hesitate to. If um, we have a we have a life support fund for people who are struggling financially, please don't let um, shame or pride be a reason why you wouldn't avail yourself of that if you are in financial difficulty. We want to come out of this together and we want to come out of this healthy and stronger as a family of believers together. So let, let's help one another, keep helping one another and let others help you if you really need it. Thanks, Dave. That's brilliant. John, anything from you? I, only just to continue what, what Chris was saying about the kind of change in the world. It's, it's just struck me that we hear our, our world leaders talking about compassion and kindness. And 
and things that maybe have been underrated for such a long time. And I think those are, those are things that are going to come to the fore as we look, look around the world and see who is suffering, who is struggling, and for, for kind of God to be putting a heart in us to, to reach and to serve the poor and those who are, who are really um, just hit and impacted by this in, in a larger way. That compassion and kindness are things that, that we should be leading in, but it's great to hear, to hear the, um, the Prime Minister talk about that as well. Wonderful. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Well, as is normal in these uh, situations, the oldest one gets the last word. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to say to the church how impressed I am with you guys as leaders. Um, some of you have been elders a short time, some a longer time. Um, and, and this is a situation none of us could ever have anticipated. But I genuinely can't imagine leading the church through a time like this with a nicer, more humble, more hardworking, uh, more joy-filled and uh, group of guys. And I'm so thankful to God for each one of you. And uh, so I want to just commend these guys to the church and say you've got a great team of elders here and uh, God has got a great future ahead for us uh, in lockdown and out of lockdown. Uh, and I thank you church for watching, taking the time to bear with us through to the end and uh, to hear the answers to some of these questions. I trust it's been helpful for you and uh, do feel free to come back to us if you have other, other thoughts and other questions that you want to ask. This isn't the end of the process. We're still listening to God. We're still trying to hear from God through the local church and your opinion is still uh, valued by us so uh, we're going to wrap up there and uh, say thank you very much so we'll give you a big wave and we'll sign off god bless bye bye, bye.